ladies and gentlemen. Uh, glad to meet you at the conference. My talk today is about the comparative analysis of mathematical models for the problem of electron optics. Uh, for the beginning, I will give you the problem, electron optic problem for formulation, and then a brief comparative analysis of different numerical models. Then I spent uh, a time for mathematical aspects of uh, different uh, methods uh, to make design for um, different um, devices in uh, electron optics. And I'll, I'll give you uh, some examples how these methods works uh, in different areas, application areas. The first, uh, the complete set of uh, equations describe uh, the electron optic problems. Uh, consists of the field equation, motion equation for the charged particles, continuity equation, which is uh, the conservation law for total charge and uh, currents, then emission laws and uh, material equations. As for uh, the field equations, in stationary case, uh, this is a elliptical type uh, Poisson equation, for harmonic oscillation, uh, it is a uh, Helmholtz equation. And for non stationary case, it is a Maxwell system. The emission law um, includes as photo emission, as thermal emission, field emission, and secondary electron emission. There are two types of electron optical devices. First type, uh, the devices for energy transformation is using the power of, power of uh, uh, electron and iron beams. Uh, this is the uh, electron and iron guns, klystrons, magnetrons, traveling waste tubes, etc. The goal of uh, for these devices is uh, to provide a maximal concentration of energy in small uh, area. The other uh, type of uh, devices are the precision uh, devices for image transformation is using the electron beams. Uh, they are electron optic converters, light amplifiers, mass an analyzers, microscopes, Straight cameras, night vision glasses, etc. Different requirements for the device parameter essentially determines the uh, difference of mathematical apparatus for the modeling of uh, these devices, trajectory analysis or aberration approach. The first method is uh, so called metric, matrix optics in accelerator physics. Modern accelerator in uh, terra electron volt, uh, volt energy range contains tens of thousands uh, of beam control elements, rotary focusing correcting magnets, resonators, etc. If the electromagnetic fields of these elements do don't overlap, the flight of the beam through each element can be described but by a propagator matrix that, transformation, that transforms the parameters of the beam at the entrance and uh, exit from the elements. This is a matrix M, where S is a longitudinal coordinate vector. So at the uh, picture, you can see typical uh, scheme of uh, particle accelerator, which consists of the injection uh, part and the main ring and small damping ring. 
The advantage of um, matrix method is fast and efficient analysis of dim dynamics in an accelerator with multiple uh, control elements. The disadvantage is uh, analysis is impossible for injectors in which non relativistic beam uh, accelerated to ultra relativistic energies because the uh, field of uh, each uh, control elements are overlapped. Uh, the next method is particle in cell. Uh, method, uh, which can uh, simulate uh, non-stationary problems. It is a it's kind of uh, relaxation method, which consists of two parts. First, uh, we should uh, evaluate uh, the field, uh, electromagnetic fields using a uh, Maxwell system. Uh, with the motion equation for the arithmetic particles and cancellation law. Uh, at the, uh, this picture, you can see typical 75 megawatts uh, slug lystrum, which is uh, which has a huge dimension, and uh, uh, the electron gun of uh, this uh, cluster can be simulated with using uh, the particle in cell uh, method. And uh, typical simulation for the collector uh, guys uh, gun uh, required uh, the mesh, computational mesh 400 by 500 cells and a uh, few thousand uh, microparticles and a few thousand time steps. Uh, total uh, CPU time for this simulation is about uh, one hour and, or more. The uh, next one, uh, linear collider project, uh, which has uh, which take, uh, took place at, at uh, Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, uh, includes the uh, accelerator sections of many, many uh, three-dimensional cells. And uh, in the middle, you can see that uh, the complete set of uh, cells is divided into uh, some uh, parts, and uh, each part uh, has a different color, and uh, these parts distributed in supercomputers on, uh, in, on different uh, processors. At the bottom, you can see uh, the uh, result of uh, simulation in the structure when uh, initial uh, beam, create uh, the uh, cascades of uh, primary electrons. It's uh, shown with uh, a red color. Um, these primary particles uh, is not synchronized with the uh, traveling wave. So uh, it comes in the different uh, directions and uh, those parts, particles um, create huge number of uh, secondary electrons. Uh, the huge number of uh, these particles uh, distributed on the surface of the structure and it uh, leads to the uh, surface degradation for the accelerating structure. It is a problem, uh, so, so called uh, dark currents in accelerating structures. Uh, the goal of uh, simulation is to determine uh, the most dangerous uh, areas uh, 
then uh, take uh, some uh, methods to improve uh, the uh, resistance of uh, the uh, surface uh, against uh, the dangerous uh, secondary electrons. Next uh, method uh, can be uh, applied to simulate um, stationary problems uh, in the electron guns, for example. You can see that uh, in this case we have uh, the poison equation uh, and uh, for to, to simulate the particle trajectories, uh, we can divide the uh, emitting surface onto some fragments and uh, from each uh, fragment we um, run the trajectory. So uh, in order to simulate uh, these uh, nonlinear uh, problems, you can use just uh, tense uh, trajectories to represent the whole beam. This is a very effective uh, method for simulation uh, of uh, this kind of problems. And uh, for example, to simulate uh, the same gun for uh, 75 megawatts slug lystrum, uh, I used uh, the computational mesh uh, of uh, 20 by 100 cells, only 10 trajectories. 15 iterations over space charge and total computational time is about uh, 52 seconds. So it's a very fast method to simulate these nonlinear problems. The efficiency of uh, pipe current method, method comparing with the particle cell method for stationary problems of, uh, is uh, two orders higher for two-dimensional problems and three orders higher for three-dimensional problems. Uh, this uh, pipe current uh, method in electron optics can be uh, effectively uh, used uh, in simulation of um, thermonuclear uh, installations. For example, at the uh, Budker Institute of Nuclear Physics at Novosibirsk, we have uh, the plasma trap open uh, uh, gas open uh, traps, which consist of uh, two beams. Uh, the electron beam uh, extracted from plasma, the left side, of this picture, but uh, when electron uh, beam uh, come to the anode, it create uh, the ion beam, which uh, traveling in opposite direction. Uh, so uh, finally, uh, we have uh, simultaneously two beams, electron and ion beams. It's uh, a very uh, complicated uh, problem to simulate uh, such devices. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, here the results of our uh, simulation for different uh, current density. Another uh, application area uh, for this method is uh, microchannel plate amplifiers. The uh, advantage of uh, these amplifiers is uh, they have a very high gain from, uh, from a million to 10 million. Uh, so uh, in order to simulate accurately the uh, gain of uh, this device, you should simulate each uh, trajectory for each individual electron in the microchannels. So uh, blue color uh, show photoelectrons which come to the 
power of microchannel plate, and uh, they create cascade of secondary electrons. Uh, they uh, propagate uh, in the uh, core, then come to the, uh, the gap between two plates. And uh, the uh, trajectory in the ga uh, gap uh, depends on the uh, external magnetic field. Uh, in modern uh, particle accelerators, the um, um, normally used uh, strong magnetic fields about uh, up to 4.5 Tesla. It's a very high uh, magnetic field, and you can see how uh, uh, the trajectory of secondary particles depends uh, on the uh, combination of uh, electric field applied to the pore, applied to the uh, microchannel plate, and magnetic field uh, in, the, uh, in the gap. So uh, the problem uh, in simulation of uh, such devices is uh, First, uh, the huge number of uh, electrons, and we should simulate each individual electron uh, trajectory, and uh, the uh, interaction between uh, primary and secondary uh, electrons with the surface uh, of uh, microchannels uh, is uh, strong uh, quantum uh, effect. So uh, in order to accumulate uh, uh, statistics uh, to simulate uh, the gain uh, of this device, we should repeat uh, the whole uh, um, simulation 10,000 times. So uh, for this, uh, Simulation, we should use uh, clusters of uh, PC or uh, uh, parallel uh, computers. And next uh, method is uh, so called aberration approach. This method uh, normally uh, used to simulate the devices which. Uh, create and transform the image of uh, some objects. Uh, for example, night vision uh, image converter uh, and uh, night vision glasses and night vision uh, driving devices. Uh, this case, uh, we have uh, a set of small parameters. Uh, those parameters are initial energies and angles uh, for photoelectrons, which come from the photocassette. And uh, here we can uh, make expansions for the fields, electric fields, magnetic fields, and also for trajectories where um, W, V, and uh, coefficients B, C, D, F, G, E are um, aberration coefficients. So in this case, instead, uh, the uh, huge number of uh, trajectories for the electrons, we can uh, uh, evaluate just uh, uh, few uh, trajectories, few equations to evaluate uh, paraxial trajectories V and uh, W and uh, few coefficients uh, which are uh, uh, spherical aberration, curvature, astigmatism, distortion, 
uh, and uh, comma coefficients. Uh, the uh, mathematical apparatus, analytical mathematical apparatus for the aberration approach is uh, pretty complicated, but uh, this case uh, we can uh, provide the whole simulation for uh, these devices for the for one second, because uh, in this case we evaluate uh, just uh, analytical formulas. So this method is uh, very effective to simulate uh, image uh, optics, but it has uh, just one disadvantage. The disadvantage is uh, we use so-called paraxial equation. So the accuracy of uh, this calculation uh, can be not uh, very high when uh, the uh, image has a uh, big uh, trans transverse dimension. In this case, uh, we can uh, use improved method, so-called uh, principal ray method, which use a curvilinear coordinate system. Uh, in this system, we, uh, we can write the Lorentz equation, where you uh, is the electric uh, field potential, B is magnetic field, and uh, by similar way as uh, in normal uh, aberration approach, we can uh, provide uh, expansion for on the small parameters mu uh, for the off-axis trajectories. And then evaluate also uh, just few coefficients, uh, first order and second order, third order parameters. Uh, and we can simulate uh, uh, such uh, devices uh, it is um, uh, big dimension in transverse uh, direction, like uh, night vision glasses. You can see uh, this device uh, 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 on this picture. So uh, the principal array method uh, is the most adequate uh, method to simulate the precision electron optic devices. Its efficiency in the two orders of magnitude higher than for other methods in two-dimensional uh, case and four five orders higher for three-dimensional problems. Uh, the, another problem uh, in simulation of uh, such devices is the field problem. How to uh, evaluate the field in uh, for uh, complex shape uh, three-dimensional devices. One of these approaches, uh, so-called boundary element method. Uh, this method uses uh, the integral representation for the field sources uh, like um, charge, uh, space charge, and surface charges. Uh, in this case, we can uh, divide the uh, three-dimensional complex shape uh, surface onto small triangles. And uh, then we can use uh, analytical formulas, which can represent these fields. For example, for um, uh, linear uh, distribution of uh, surface charge. Uh, we have uh, this uh, formula with <laughs> these coefficients. Uh, they are uh, elementary functions. So uh, they, we can uh, evaluate this function very fast. So in order to simulate uh, the 
the mental problem with using the uh, uh, integral equations. We uh, spent just a uh, few seconds to evaluate fields in the whole area. But uh, integral previously representation has a uh, singularity when uh, observation point uh, close to the field source point. But using uh, the uh, mathematical uh, methods, we can uh, study the uh, singularity of this uh, formulas uh, in order to uh, exclude the singularity and uh, provide the uh, our computation with a very high uh, accuracy. More complicated problem is uh, to simulate uh, the space charge effects. But uh, when uh, we can uh, provide some uh, approximation for space charge, for example, in this case, uh, three linear approximation for space charge. I can evaluate all the integrals analytically. You can see the results of uh, my computation, analytical computation for final integrals for the potential and for the field gradients. And here we can see the result uh, of our um, simulation for three-dimensional electron gun for the same 75 megawatts should be klystron, which can be, uh, have been fabricated uh, at uh, Stanford Linear Accelerator Center. And uh, at the bottom, you can see the surface uh, triangle uh, mesh and uh, red color show the uh, electron beam which come from uh, the uh, cathode surface to the anode hole. Uh, we provide uh, the simulation uh, for two versions of uh, electron gun. Diode gun, which consists of uh, two electrodes, electron, electrodes cathode and anode, and triad gun, which include also uh, the uh, intermediate grid to provide uh, much uh, accurate uh, convergence for the beam. As a result, uh, the uh, S-band slug cluster have been uh, fabricated and uh, this cluster uh, can provide uh, the pulse power output, uh, pulse power about um, 50 meg megawatts and more. But uh, the cluster design consists of two parts. Uh, first part, it, uh, it is a, a preliminary um, design. In this case, uh, we can use um, simply model to simulate uh, the bunches uh, which uh, have been fab fabricated in the uh, cluster resonators uh, using one dimensional disk model. In this model, the whole round uh, beam divided onto uh, cylindrical disks uh, and those uh, disks propagate in uh, longitudinal direction and uh, those uh, disks um, under the uh, high frequency field compressed into the bunches and you can see how this uh, uh, round beam uh, 
uh, compressed in, into three bunches, propagating uh, through the cavities. And uh, I implement the uh, pro, uh, program which can simulate uh, the uh, Klystron uh, in uh, one uh, dimensional disk model. But then, on the uh, second step, uh, when we um, study the optimal um, parameters uh, in preliminary design, uh, on the first uh, stage, we can uh, provide uh, more accurate uh, simulation using, uh, for example, CST Microwave Studio. Uh, this uh, studio uses uh, the particle and cell uh, model to simulate uh, the uh, beam propagating from the gun through the cavities. Uh, but uh, this uh, model can I simulate uh, some uh, precisional physical uh, effects like uh, multiparting effect and uh, uh, you can see that uh, in, in order to simulate uh, the beam propagating through the whole uh, klystron we should uh, use million and million uh, particle, microparticles. And uh, the computational mesh uh, for this problem includes uh, tens million uh, of uh, cells. So total uh, computational time uh, for this problem can be uh, seven, 10, 15 hours. So it's a pretty complicated uh, problem uh, to simulate uh, the cluster, uh, the uh, physical effect in the cluster, inside the cluster. The uh, output power of our cluster uh, was uh, 55 megawatts. So, uh, I should uh, summarize uh, when uh, solving each specific physical problem, it's very important to choose an adequate numerical, analytical, or numerical analytical method that uh, will provide a quick and uh, effective solution. The analytical technique for the precision evaluation of the field distribution and its high order derivatives used in uh, 3D order operation theory was developed for the surface and volume sources. The convergence and similarity problems for this technique were studied very accurately. Uh, the representative technique was implemented in uh, a number of uh, computational codes in 1D uh, disk code, V-disk, 2D codes, Poison 2, Maxwell 2, and 3D code Poison 3 for high current relativistic optics, and Optics 3, precision optics uh, for the image devices, and uh, Track TP, particle dynamics in accelerators. Thanks for your attention.